I believe what I know that toxins cause ALS. I know it. Um, everything about him is ALS. Uh, and he was progressing along the typical path of an ALS patient uh, that he was deteriorating rapidly over a year or two and then suddenly his deterioration stopped and has not progressed. Uh, what amazes people is the fact that the ALS has stopped progressing whereas in most other patients we see a continual progression which then makes people say well maybe he doesn't have ALS. Well there's nothing else that causes the disease that he has other than ALS. Well our daughter gave Donald the book Eric is Winning and we decided to try the naturopathic route. And we did uh, in 2004, I believe, was the, the first time we went to Florida to see this doctor. And um, we could tell that he was feeling better. He had more energy. And we did that for about a year. We live in a county with less than 30,000 people here. Uh, I want to say it's more close to 26,000. And we had several cases. The first one, a uh, good gentleman that I knew, uh, he didn't live over 13 months from what I understand with ALS. Uh, he went traditional. He, I don't think he was trying anything that I know of. Uh, we don't really know. Uh, the second gentleman, Basically the same thing, uh, lived, uh, I understand, somewhere between 11 and 12 months. And uh, also was, uh, from what I understand, was just doing traditional medicine. So, sure, I panicked when I was doing mine, but I, everybody tells me I'm doing so much better than, for the people that knew them, they always come to me and say, you're doing so much better than the ones we also knew. So, I think what I'm doing is working. You wonder who is controlling the research, who is trying to stop people from finding this stuff out. I don't know, and I'm not accusing anybody, not attacking anybody. I'm just saying, why not? Why not ask the question, why Hardy County? Why that many people in this county? And is there something peculiar about our county? His first clay bath, he had movement in two fingers that he had no control over before. Um, John began seeing and feeling differently. Nova Scotia is known by some as the tailpipe of North America. With the prevailing winds, and what they call the jet stream. We get the factory pollution from the Ohio River Valley. We have had airborne mercury deposited in our lakes. My cousin in Boise, Idaho, who I had just told that I had Lou Gehrig, he had done some research on the internet and referred me to a book and he suggested that I get this book because this gentleman had overcome his ALS and he was uh, on a specific diet and that I should try and follow the same diet. For two weeks, I had this cramping and even the fingers started to curl in. These three fingers began to curl and I would have to physically pry it open. It's like the muscles were in spasm and I pried it open, and it became more difficult to do things. I would try to swim in our pool, which we don't have anymore, and I couldn't hold my fingers together. They were not strong enough to hold together to pull the water when you swim. We have to take responsibility in our culture for our own health. There's something wrong with going to the doctor and saying, I have ALS, give me a pill. You can't do that, right? That's impossible, whether it's ALS or Alzheimer's. And what do we see on TV? Every other ad on TV is the, the uh, pharmaceutical industries selling us something, okay? And part of that ad is a five minute disclaimer about, you know, they're not responsible for this or that. The neurologist, after giving us that uh, information of what I had, ALS, and Lou Gehrig, offered no referrals to anybody else to see. There was no treatment and no cure offered. And simply accept the fact that you have five years. And that was it. You stick to your ground and you say, no. No, excuse me, my husband is not going to die. 
we're going to do these things to keep him alive. And then the doctor said, well, you can't do those things. That's just ridiculous. And you think, I don't think it's ridiculous. I think it's true. I'm not sure who's ridiculous. I'm not sure what the truth is. But I know that this little bit of what I'm telling you, we've researched enough to believe it's true. And I don't like you telling me I'm ridiculous. I think at nine years and change, the proof's in the pudding. We have someone who literally is minimally affected by a disorder that at this point in time, 95% or greater of everyone who would have been afflicted would no longer be with us. That's huge. So that's the difference. Carol has taken a different stance. She and I work together aggressively with IV therapies. We work with oral therapies. And again, lifestyle. It's a combination approach that seems to have made the major impact. Eric always advises people not to detox too quickly. We've built up toxins in our body over years, so you can't get rid of them overnight. You have to take time to do it and let your body adjust. The body does a fairly good job of detoxification, but it's not designed to handle the toxic load that we're seeing today. In the phase one detox of the liver and phase two detox of the liver uh, can get in, in overload. Your lymphatic system gets congested. As you're mobilizing these toxins from intracellular to extracellular, that the detox pathways are open, that the bowels are open, that things are functioning, because otherwise, yes, it can cause fatigue. So it's, it, it's a delicate dance that goes on. It's a biochemical, energetic dance that goes on when you're dealing with these extremely sick patients. We can slow down the disease progression considerably, whereas most other patients will continue to deteriorate rapidly. We can at least slow it down considerably so they don't have rapid progression. But we have one or two other patients that have done not quite as equally as well as Eric has done, but very close.